Hi guys, Brad Asset Management here and today I'm doing a stock review of AT&T, ticker symbol T, using my six simple steps. Please stick around to the end of the video where I think AT&T can increase over 100% based on my valuations. First, let's look at the stock price over the last year. At the start of the pandemic, AT&T was at highs of $39 a share, then has hit lows of $26 a share, has traded relatively flat since then with a few fluctuations, but is now at $28.69. If we look at the last five years, you can see that AT&T has previously traded at a highs of up to $43 a share, but has dropped since then and then rebounded and then dropped again. So can AT&T get up to its previous highs of around $39 a share? Let's find out today. Firstly, the market cap of AT&T is $203.4 billion. Now let's look at my six simple steps. The first step is P ratio less than 20. The current P of AT&T is minus 37. That is a fail as they're not profitable at the minute. Now to look at step two is revenue increasing over the last five years and the revenue has gone from 163.79 billion to 171.76 billion. So that is a check mark there. The revenue has increased over the last five years. Step two is profit increasing over the last five years. And as we saw before in the P ratio being negative, we, we know the profit is in the negative. So the profit has gone from 13.33 billion to minus 3.82 billion. That is a fail there as the profit has not increased. If we look at the previous four years, you can see profit was increasing steadily, but it has decreased now. So that would be something that you would want to look at and see why the profit is decreasing. Step three, are the shares outstanding decreasing or flat over the last five years? And the shares outstanding has gone from 6.14 billion to 7.13 billion. So that is a fail again because the shares outstanding have increased, meaning the shareholders have been diluted. Just want to say thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you enjoy investing in stock review videos. So let's head on to step four, are the current assets greater than the current liabilities? As you can see, AT&T's current assets are 52 billion, but the current liabilities are 63.44 billion. So that is a fail there. They cannot pay off their current liabilities with their current assets. So things aren't looking too good for AT&T here, but when we're looking at step six, which is free cash flow increasing over the last five years, is where things start to look a lot better. The free cash flow of AT&T has increased from 17.82 billion to 27.45 billion. So that's a massive check mark there. The free cash flow has massively increased over the last five years. Looking at the last four years as well, you can see it's been a steady increase with it peaking at the year prior with 17 billion, 17 billion again, 22 and 29 billion dollars in free cash flow. So if we take that as an average, the average free cash flow over the last five years is 28 billion, which gives us a price to average free cash flow at around 7.18 billion or a price to current free cash flow at 7.5. This is massive as normally we're looking for values at around times 20. So that's a massive check mark for AT&T there. Their price to average free cash flow is around seven. Now, one of everyone's favorite parts of AT&T is the dividend. It has a massive 7.3% dividend yield. The annual dividend is $2.8 a share and the next dividend amount is 50 cents a share. Once again, Interactive Brokers is a bit delayed here because the ex-dividend date is the 8th of April 2021. This is the prior dividend that was paid out on the 1st of February and I can say that I did receive a dividend from AT&T and I used it to buy more shares of AT&T so I'm very happy with that. It does have a very safe dividend as the total dividend is around $15 billion but the free cash flow is 27 so it is safe. The Refinitiv ratings have it as a hold with 9 buying, 17 holding and 6 selling with an average target price at just under $30. But if we look at the high price, it is $38. So this is the side I am leaning to. And the tip ranks rate and have it as a monitor buy with six buying, six holding, two selling with an average target price at $32, but on the high side of 38. So to quickly summarize the six simple steps, P ratio less than 20 was a fail as it has a negative P ratio. Revenue has increased over the last five years from 163 to 171 billion. The profit has decreased from 20 billion to minus 3 billion, so that was a fail. Shares outstanding has also increased from 6.14 billion to 7.13 billion. The current assets cannot pay off the current liabilities with 52 billion to 63 billion, but the free cash flow has increased over the last five years from 17 billion to 27.45 billion. So that is only two passes, but I think they have passes in the right way due to the free cash flow. So do I think AT&T is still a buy in 2021 despite the negative profit? And the answer is a resounding yes, I think it is. Based on my calculations here, I have AT&T at a calculated stock price at around $60 due to its free cash flow, which is a 113% increase. So I think AT&T is a very, very safe buy. I have a large position in it now. I'm adding to it whenever I can. 
AT&T always has resistance at this current price. It has not gone up below its current rate since 2003. It's been holding since then. It's been steadily increasing. The dividend's massive. It's a safe stock. I think it has a lot of potential growth with 5G, and I think this is a staple in any portfolio. I've reviewed quite a few companies so far, and none of them come close to the price to free cash flow of AT&T. Normally they're over 20, I think the lowest was Walmart at about 20, so to get AT&T at only 7 times free cash flow is a great purchase. Right guys, I want to thank you all for watching, please leave a comment on your thoughts below, and consider subscribing if you enjoy investing in stock review videos, and I'll see you guys next time.